Hey everyone, Mitchell Gould here, and in today's video, we're gonna go over LinkedIn ads targeting options. So first I'm gonna go through this board here and show you all the available targeting options. Then we're gonna go into the LinkedIn ads campaign manager account. I'll show you where you can create them. And then I'll also review a few settings and things you should know about LinkedIn ads targeting. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So here are all the LinkedIn ads targeting options. We have location, company, job experience, education, interests and traits, demographics, predictive audiences, and match audiences. Now just a note, if you're in the EEA or Switzerland, some of these aren't available to you. And I'm gonna go into each of these more granularly so you can see all the attributes you can target. So for example, within company, you can target by company name, company size, company industry. And all of this data is based off of users' LinkedIn profiles, company profiles, and LinkedIn's behavioral data. So if you're curious about the exact definitions of these, I'll put the support doc in the description of this video, but this will tell you what a, you know, a job title actually is, what a job function, job seniority is, and how LinkedIn determines that. So you can check that out if you want. So now I'm gonna go through each of these and show you all the attributes within them that you can target by. So for location, you can target by country, state, city, metropolitan area, town, and county. You can't do radius targeting or target by zip codes like other platforms like Meta or Google Ads. So just something to keep in mind there. Um, for companies, you can target by company name, industry, size, revenue, your own company followers, categories, connections of people that are employees at certain companies, as well as growth rate. So if you're curious about these definitions, go ahead and check out this um, support doc here and that will tell you more about how LinkedIn determines growth rate, for example. And then we go into job experience here. We have job title, job function, job seniority. You can target by member skills and years of experience. For education, you can target degrees, fields of studies, member schools, interests and traits. You can target member groups, member interests, and member traits. And for demographics, you can target members' age and members' gender. Um, for predictive audiences, if you're going to create a predictive audience, this is like LinkedIn's lookalike audience if you're familiar with Meta and other platforms. You can create a predictive audience based off of people that submitted a Legion form, a contact list, or conversion um, data that you have. And for match audiences, you can upload a company list or a contact list. I have videos about those that you can explore if you're interested in that. And then you can also set up retargeting audiences. So you can retarget by people who engaged with your ads previously. So if they opened a conversation ad or clicked a CTA in a conversation ad, you can retarget those users specifically. If they engage with your LinkedIn company page, if they responded to one of your LinkedIn events, you can also target people that engage with your website. So if they visited your website, if they engage with your single image ads or your document ads, your video ads, or if they opened or submitted a Legion form. And this isn't specifically retargeting, but you can upload contacts via CRM integration. So if you have HubSpot, you can sync contact list into LinkedIn ads automatically. And next, I just wanna clarify a few things around targeting. There are a few attributes that you can't include together. So for example, you can't target job titles plus seniority, um, but you can target a job function and seniority level. And if you are targeting job titles, um, you're unable to exclude job functions, job senioritys, years of experience, member age, member gender, and member groups. So there's some things that you can't do if you're already targeting certain attributes, things that you can't exclude. So I just wanna show a few things there. So now we're gonna go into the LinkedIn Ads Campaign Manager account. So there are three areas where you can create your audiences. You can create a saved audience, which I'll show you. You can create your audience while you're setting up your campaign. And then when you wanna create a match audience, so for example, upload a company list or create a retargeting audience, you can do that in the match audience section. So I'm gonna show you all three of those right now. So first we'll set up a new campaign and I'll show you where you can add your audience. So we'll go to create, create a campaign. I'm just gonna call this a demo. 
as we're going through an example here. I'm going to turn off the campaign group objective. This is actually setting up a new campaign group here. So I'll click next. And then this is our demo campaign here. So when you're setting up a new campaign, you'll see in step two, you uh, set up your campaign details, your campaign name, you select your objective. For this example, we'll just say website visits. You scroll down and the next section is the audience section. So you can click audience here. It'll bring you into audience section. So this is where we choose our location targeting. Now I always recommend turning your location setting to permanent location. Um, so you're only focusing people that are typically within the location you're targeting. If you have recent or permanent, you can get people that are just visiting and traveling. So if you're targeting, say, Austin, Texas, you might be having people coming internationally for business or for, for vacations. So um, I always like to recommend using permanent location there. And then you're gonna go into the audience attribute section. So you're gonna start by clicking narrow, and this is where you can select the audience attributes that we just went over. So if you click audience attributes, you'll see there's company, demographics, education, job experience, interests, and traits. So if we click job experience here, you can see we can select functions, seniorities, everything I showed you in that previous board, those are all the options here. So for example, if we select job titles, we can say, um, supply chain manager as just an example and we'll see those job titles there we can select senior supply chain managers it's going to give us some suggested titles so that's how you start going through and creating your audience so say we selected a list of job titles that we want to target we also want to narrow it down by company size we can go into the audience attributes we can go to company and then we can select uh, specific company names or company industries. Uh, we can scroll down, we'll go to company size. Say we wanna target companies that have 50 to 200 employees because we know that's our best customer. And then we can also narrow that down more by going to um, company again and say we wanna select specific industries. So we know we only serve the construction industry or maybe there's a few other industries that we serve um, we can select those. And just a note, it's a good idea if you have multiple like personas or ICPs that you wanna target, you can only set those up in individual audiences. So you can have a campaign targeting a specific industry or vertical, um, and then you can set up another campaign targeting another persona that you wanna target. So just an example there of how you would go through and set that up. Now there's an important thing that you wanna be careful of. So when you're setting up your audience targeting, you can see I keep hitting narrow and that's gonna make this an and function. So it's job titles and they must be, be working in a company of this size and within this industry. Now, if I was setting this up and I was in job titles and I was in here, and then I selected a different attribute. So I said education and I selected, just for an example here, let's say bachelor's degree, and I select that. You can see that it turned this into an or statement. So if I close that, now this is saying something completely different and saying job titles or people with a bachelor's degree. So this would be targeting you know, people with a bachelor's degree that work in companies this size within this industry. So you can get really far off from the people that you want to actually target by introducing or statements. So just keep that in mind when you're creating your audience, you're keeping an eye out for or and and statements. In a lot of cases, you're probably not going to want the or statement there. Um, so just keep an eye on that. And then lastly here, uh, enable audience expansion, recommend always keeping that off. Uh, we don't want LinkedIn to expand this further than what we defined. So I always recommend keeping enable audience expansion off. And then to the right hand side, you can see your target audience size. You can also see a breakdown of the segments. So um, we can see the seniority levels of the people that we would be targeting based off of these attributes. Um, so that's how you set it up within the campaign. Next, I'm going to show you how to set it up in the saved audience. I prefer setting it up first as a saved audience because it allows you to see more insights about your audience um, as you're creating it. So we'll go into 
the campaign manager account again. And this time we're gonna go into the plan section, we're gonna to go to audiences, and we're gonna to go to the save tab here. So we're gonna click create audience. And then on the right hand side here, I'm gonna dismiss this message. Again, it looks similar just as we created it in the campaign itself. So I'm gonna say uh, permanent location here. And then we can start creating our audience based off of our ideal customer profile and the personas that we wanna reach. So we're gonna target companies within a particular size here, 11 to 50 in this example here. And then we'll narrow that down again by company and we'll do company industries. We'll select, just as an example, a few different industries here um, that our business uh, targets. So you can see the estimated reach here for this potential audience is 2,300,000. And uh, we can further narrow that down now. We can say we wanna reach a specific persona. So we'll go into job experience. We'll type in job titles. We're maybe targeting uh, uh, engineers within this example. So software engineers. And you can see it brought the audience down to 16,000. Maybe we want to include full stack software development specialist. Just as an example here, so we're targeting people within this company size, within these industries, and they have these job titles. And that brings audience size to 21,000. Now, if we click apply here, we're going to be able to see insights about this audience. So that's why I like creating it within the saved audience section. So if we go to members here, we can scroll down and we can see the different um, job titles within this audience that we selected. So within LinkedIn, when you're setting up your profile, you can input any job title that you want. It's a text field, so it's not standard across everything, but LinkedIn tries to standardize all the job titles into specific job titles that they have available that you can select. So software engineer is gonna capture people that have additional job titles, but uh, kind of match based off of their whole profile uh, that they might be in the software engineering space. So it's always good to take a look at the, the job titles that are here. So we can see here, once we start to go through this, we see some students that are listed here. We see Bitcoin miner. Now from here, what I like to do is go into the exclusion section and then exclude any of the most irrelevant job titles that I see. So for example, we don't wanna be targeting students at this time. So I'm gonna exclude anyone with the current job title of student. And I also, in this example, don't wanna uh, target anyone with um, who's into Bitcoin mining. So I'll, I'll select that. And then I'll scroll back down here and I'll click apply and it will remove those job titles from my targeting here. You can see the audience size now at 17,000. So it's really good to um, get a sense of what the audience looks like based off of your selection criteria. You can look at company attributes here, see which companies are showing. If there are any particular companies that are really large that you don't wanna be targeting that don't make sense, um, you can exclude those. So for example, we have Bank of America here. Maybe we, we don't wanna target them. So we'll go into here and we can search for Bank of America and we can exclude those people as well from our campaign. And then we can apply that and that's in there. And then next, once you set up your audience here, you can go to manage here and you can save. So just give it a descriptive name that makes sense to you. And then you can save that. And then you can go into the campaign manager. So we're in the campaign section again. And instead of setting up the audience here within your campaign, you can go to the saved audience tab, click that and then you can select the, the audience that you created and you can apply that to your campaign and you'll see it'll add all those attributes that we added in the saved audience. Again, make sure we have enabled audience expansion off. Always recommend keeping that off. So that's how you set it up using the saved audience. Now I'm gonna show you how to create match audiences. So to create match audiences, we're gonna go into the plan section here, go to audiences, go to the match tab, and then you're gonna click create audience and you can create a predictive audience or you can create match audience here. So we're gonna create a match audience 
and you can either upload a company or contact list or you can create your retargeting audiences. So again, we can retarget by people that interacted with the company page, a document ad, a legion form, our video ads, conversation ads, our events, single image ads, or if they visited our website. So you'll click one of these that you wanna create, you'll go to next, and then you'll give it a name. You can add in uh, when they engage for how long they'll stay in this audience bucket. So I have videos about creating you know, website visitor audiences that you can take a look at on my channel. But for example, if we select 180 days, from this date on, it will keep this person in this audience for 180 days. Um, these audiences, uh, website visitor audiences aren't retroactive, so it's only going to start collecting people now. And once they enter into the audience, they're going to stay there for 180 days. You can then add in your URL. I like to use contains. And then for this example, we'll say mitchellgould.com. So make sure to give it a name. We'll call this website visitors 180 days. We'll go to the next step here, agree and continue. So it'll create that audience and they'll start to collect data. So that's where you'll go to create your match audiences. Once you've created those, you can add them into your campaign. So we'll go back into our campaign. So in your campaign in the audience section, instead of using LinkedIn's native attributes um, in the audience attributes section where you can select job experience and company, we're first gonna go into the audience section. And this is where you can select your list. So if you uploaded a company or a contact list, you can find it in there. If you created a predictive audience, you'll find it in there. Lookalike audiences have sunsetted, so that's not available. Uh, predictive audiences is essentially the new lookalike. Uh, you can select your retargeting audiences. If you have a CRM integration, you connect uh, through third-party uh, lists there. So we'll go to retargeting here and we can go into the website visitors and uh, we can select that website visitor audience that we just uh, created. And then the cool thing about LinkedIn ads is you can further qualify your traffic. So if you're retargeting users, you could further narrow down the audience. So say we're targeting our website visitors and we wanna reach people that have a specific job experience or work in a specific job function, you could further narrow it down um, by selecting those attributes. So uh, again, always wanna make sure that we're using uh, permanent location for the location targeting and we're turning off enable audience expansion. And that's how you create a match audience and add it into your campaign. So lastly, I just wanted to reiterate a few things that you always wanna check when setting up your audience. So again, I recommend turning off audience expansion. Make sure you're watching out for and or or statements. If you're using or statements, you can be creating your audience a lot broader than you actually intended. So make sure you keep an eye on that. And then when you're setting up your location targeting, I always recommend using the permanent location uh, setting instead of the recent or permanent location. So a few small little settings, but they can drastically impact how your audience is set up. So always make sure you check those when creating your audience. And there is one more thing I want to mention, which is Sales Navigator, which is a paid LinkedIn tool. But this can be helpful for understanding your ideal customer profile and who you would be reaching if you selected certain attributes within LinkedIn ads. So if you come in here to the lead or the account section within Sales Navigator, you can input similar attributes as you would in LinkedIn ads. So you can put the company, um, size, the, the location, you can filter it down by roles, so job functions, seniority levels, job titles, and that will show you profiles of who you could potentially be reaching if you were to set those same attributes within LinkedIn ads. And that could be good for spot checking and understanding um, if you're really hitting the right persona. You could also go into some of these profiles and see if they have specific member skills that you might wanna narrow your audience or test targeting. So um, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, another tool to help you uh, kind of refine your audience targeting, which I, I wanted to make sure I mentioned here. So that was everything I wanted to cover. We covered the LinkedIn ads targeting options, how to create them in the campaign manager account, a few settings to review. If you have any questions about LinkedIn ads targeting or just LinkedIn ads in general, please put them in the comments section. I'd be happy to help you out there. Thanks for watching and have a great day.